This episode is brought to you by Simple Contacts. Visit the link below to save $20 on your first order. Sixty-three years ago, beginning in 1955, the two Cold War superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union, vied for supremacy in spaceflight capability. Over the course of the next 20 years, the two giants battled it out, with each briefly gaining the upper hand before the enemy made some new advancements, until the US finally put a man on the moon in 1969, and the contest gradually faded. This period became known as the Space Race, two decades that sparked huge jumps in space technology that would have taken much longer if not for each country's fear and hatred of their opponent. As Cold War tensions slowly eased, the new frontier of outer space became a fairly peaceful scientific playground, with countries from around the world agreeing not to mess with each other's equipment and even cooperating on various projects. And so the fear and paranoia of the space race faded into history. But over the last decade, there have been rumblings of a new contest beyond Earth, a subtle jockeying for dominance in outer space operations, and it's mostly centered around satellites. While satellites may not seem as flashy or important as landing a human on the moon, they play incredibly important roles in modern society. They facilitate communications, provide GPS for both military and civilian use, help countries keep tabs on aggressive or belligerent nations or groups, provide the backbone for business and financial staples like global video conferencing, instant credit card authorization, inventory management for large manufacturing companies and warehouses. They allow us to track weather on a global scale, which can help predict and prepare for natural disasters like hurricanes and intense storms. Earth observation satellites can monitor ocean and wind currents, as well as the extent of forest fires, oil spills, and airborne pollution. They're increasingly important in the developing world, allowing connections to educational and medical expertise that could otherwise not reach remote regions. And of course, satellites help us study things beyond Earth, things that would be impossible for humans to see without them. In short, we rely on satellites to keep our 21st century world running. In March of 2019, two Washington DC think tanks, the Center of Strategic and International Studies and the Secure World Foundation, published new studies on the current state of global space capabilities and related threats. One of the documents, titled Space Threat Assessment 2019, addresses some concerning developments from an American perspective. After decades of fairly established dominance in outer space, the United States has begun to fall behind in some endeavors. China surpassed the US in the total number of space launches for 2018, with 38 compared to 34, and showed off its technological advancements by landing a rover on the far side of the moon. They also appeared to have placed truck-mounted jammers on Mischief Reef in the Spratly Islands, indicating a preparedness to interfere with foreign operations. And back in June of 2018, Symantec reported a significant hacking initiative from China that targeted satellite operators, defense contractors, and telecommunications companies. Besides China, Russia has also been making strides in anti-satellite technology. In December of 2018, they conducted a seventh test of their direct ascent anti-satellite system using a mobile launching system. And perhaps more alarmingly, a picture surfaced in September showing a Russian MiG-31 fighter jet carrying what's believed to be a mock-up of an air-launched anti-satellite missile. Also in September, it was reported that Russia is developing a new co-orbital anti-satellite system designed for operations in geosynchronous Earth orbit, which would pose a major threat to the rest of the world's space operations. To top things off, Russia has been actively using its electronic counter space systems to jam GPS signals around Norway and Finland for multiple NATO and allied military exercises. This kind of active meddling, while alarming, is nothing new from Russia. What's more surprising is the impressive show India put on early in 2019. On March 27th, one day after the release of the CSIS report on space threats, India launched a missile into one of its own satellites, demonstrating their improved anti-satellite capabilities. India has claimed for years that they had such technology, but this was their first real demonstration, and it's made quite an impact on geopolitical understanding in terms of space power. Some experts now recommend that India be considered a legitimate space rival to nations like China, and that it needs to be included in future negotiations on the use of outer space. The implications for the proliferation of anti-satellite technology are severe. When a satellite is destroyed in Earth orbit, it creates thousands of fragments that are extremely hazardous to other space operations. A single piece of debris traveling at thousands of miles per hour could punch right through a critical piece of equipment, completely destroying it. This also makes the future of manned space missions increasingly dangerous, especially if more satellites are destroyed in this manner and we can't effectively clean up the debris. India's display of technological prowess and the results of the 2019 space threat studies have revealed that, perhaps unsurprisingly, America isn't the leader in all aspects of space technology, and certainly not in the arena of anti-satellite programs. Since the end of the space race, the world has naively assumed that a nation's satellites are safe from foreign attack, whether because they're hard to hit or simply because no one would dare violate the Treaty on the Peaceful Use of Outer Space. 
That increasingly seems not to be the case, and as anti-satellite technology proliferates around the world, you can bet that the rest of the big players will jump into the race. How this second space race will end is anyone's guess, but you can see how there are some seriously alarming implications for international relations. Of course, if you're like me, it's hard to see anything without your contacts. If you wear contact lenses and find yourself dreading that annual appointment to renew your prescription, then you're going to love Simple Contacts. It's a great new company that makes this annoying process simple. Simple Contacts lets you renew your expired contact lens prescription and reorder your brand of lenses from your phone or computer in minutes. It brings the doctor's office to wherever you are, whenever you need it. You can take the Simple Contacts vision test online in five minutes. A real doctor reviews it, and if your vision hasn't changed, renews your prescription. You save time, save money, and save yourself a headache. And if you already have an unexpired prescription, just upload a photo of it or your doctor's info and order your lenses in minutes for a great price. They do all the hard work for you. Simple Contacts offers every brand of lenses and their prices are unbeatable. The prescription is just 20 bucks, and shipping is free. Best of all, fans of Second Thought can get 20 bucks off their first Simple Contacts order. Just go to simplecontacts.com slash secondthought or enter the code secondthought at checkout. I want to mention that this isn't a replacement for your periodic eye health exam. You still need those occasionally. But it is the most convenient way to renew a prescription and reorder your contacts if your vision hasn't changed. So check out Simple Contacts and get $20 off by going to simplecontacts.com slash secondthought or just enter the code secondthought at checkout.